climate change is a defining human development issue of our generation. Today, we are witnessing firsthand what could be the onset of the reversal of major human development in our lifetime. On New Year's Day in 2004, Cyclone Hita traveled on a direct path for two days. It intensified into a Category 5, the highest on the scale. The cyclone carried gusts of over 300 kilometers per hour and pushed waves more than 50 meters high. And it was so, so scary. Get some warm clothes for the little one, we all go, we run for the hills. Don't know I want to live. To see that day again, if ever's gonna happen again. Damage was estimated to cost $50 million, the equivalent of New Way's exports for 200 years. One of the biggest problems that any island country would have in recovering after the cyclone is their inability to quickly rebuild the economy, given the fact that they don't have the financial resources or reserves to enable them to do that. In February 2005, a king tide inundated the islands of Kiribati, lifting waves higher than ever seen before. Yeah. I came back and saw my small house in the sea. The waves were pounding in. The waves carried by the tide eroded acres of beachfront and smashed through homes, washing away gardens and chasing many families from their homes. Scientists believe that the increase in frequency and strength of natural disasters in the Pacific are related to climate change. They believe that winds from tropical cyclones could increase by up to 20%. Dealing with climate change is no longer a possibility for our grandchildren in the future. It is a reality for us today. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, sea level rise is expected to increase inundation storm surge, erosion, and other coastal hazards. Brought on by the ever-accelerating burning of fossil fuels by industrialized nations, and indiscriminate clearing of large areas of the Earth's carbon-absorbing forests, the increase of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has enhanced the so-called greenhouse effect. This is causing a warming of our planet and melting our polar ice caps. The results are global warming, a rise in sea levels, and extreme changes in weather patterns, all of which are being seen here in the Pacific. If we do not reduce the amount of uh, carbon dioxide and other gases like methane that are actually going out into the atmosphere, then we are seriously in trouble. Pacific Island countries can no longer afford to wait and see whether or not industrialized countries will reduce their greenhouse emissions. They are already facing the realities of climate change. In Fiji, the last few years have seen more and more coral reefs permanently affected by coral bleaching, which scientists say may be the result of warmer sea surface temperatures. The loss of coral and the marine life that survive on them is not only a problem for those who glean food from the reef, but also for the tourism industry, Fiji's largest income earner. Fiji is sort of looked on as an idyllic South Pacific paradise for tourism. And with, if all these things were to take place, I think our image and certainly our product would be destroyed. For island countries whose economies are primarily based on one or two main income sources, the effects of climate change would be devastating. Climate change has the potential to affect the livelihoods of a majority of Fiji's population, many of whom rely on agriculture-based industries for their livelihoods. In Samoa, coastal erosion is another effect of climate change, due to the rise in sea level and the more frequent storm surges that strike the coastline. Salua Fata village on Upolu in Samoa is one example of a village facing serious erosion. Most of our coastal land was destroyed by the sea 
and some of our village start to move inland. The increase in frequency and strength of cyclones in recent years is of great concern to the government of Samoa. Uh, I cannot uh, stress enough the great uh, uh, harm done to our country and the losses incurred as a result of uh, uh, Cyclone Offer and Cyclone Bell, which happened within 12 months. The damage from these natural disasters in the early 90s cost Samoa nearly $500 million, more than the country's GDP. Samoa's government recognizes the need to initiate plans to adapt and minimize the risk from climate change. As far as uh, implementing the work itself, uh, we have adopted a multi-sectorial approach. So although our ministry is directly involved uh, or leading climate change, we have got all the other agencies uh, that, uh, behind us, which means that we have uh, uh, looked at the, the capacity amongst the, ho the whole of government and not just one ministry. By burdening governments with adaptation and other responses to related disasters and crises, climate change is affecting the economic and social development of island countries. It has the potential to affect the, the uh, uh, ability of countries to achieve their developmental goals uh, as well as the, the Millennium Development Goals. So from that perspective, I see climate change as a far more crucial issue and it has the potential to become even bigger in the future if we are not uh, careful in putting in place relevant strategies. Rising sea levels have already leached into some underground water lenses, making some wells undrinkable. Miriam Tesiroro on Tarawa had to abandon her family's well last year. It's still salty. It's been a year. Before this, we had really nice water. For the low-lying atolls, Adaptation projects may only be short-term solutions to a long-term problem. And this problem presents grim choices for island leaders. The continuing rise in sea level could make Kiribati and other atoll countries uninhabitable. Any uh, marginal rise in sea level is going to impact on the, you know, the ability of the people to survive, for plant life to survive, and um, our ability to draw our water supply the science is not very encouraging, and so the future tends to suggest that at some point in time they have, there will have to be a, a significant migration of our people. In fact, New Zealand has already accepted some Kiribati citizens for relocation, but the migration of an entire population is more than just a logistical problem. It would involve uh, a threat to the continuation of our uh, ethnic group as a distinct ethnic group. Our culture, very distinct culture, we are very proud of it and, and it's, um, it is part of the, this richness of, uh, of this planet and I hope uh, it's not lost. Uh, maybe it is too late, maybe it will be diluted but I hope not entirely lost. Throughout the Pacific, climate change is affecting nearly every sector of development, from health, food security, and environment to economic growth. Because it is such um, uh, an important issue that all development partners should work close together in close partnership to try and help the countries fulfill their obligation. Because adaptation is not a technical issue. It is a social issue and it affects society as a whole. Effective responses require close collaboration and partnership between bilateral donors, aid organizations, regional organizations, as well as the Pacific Island governments themselves. The cost to Pacific Island countries from coastal erosion, loss of coral reefs, inundation and stronger and more frequent cyclones are much more than just economic and environmental issues. They are human issues. Our small island states often cannot cope with the scale of the effects of climate change without assistance. 
A grim reality faces our island countries, but it is a reality that we face together. I would stress the action now, than the action in the future. The first thing one must do as a leader of a nation is to ensure the security and survival of our people and nation, not just in the short term, but for many generations to come. As a Pacific leader, we must try to influence in some way the bigger nations who contribute most to the global greenhouse gas pollution levels that a reduction target of 80% by 2050 is necessary so that our nation in the Pacific can survive into the future. The question is, do we deny the reality or do we face up to the reality and begin to, to put into place uh, plans and proposals for dealing with it? What we need to do is to make sure that in fact we can recover what we can out of a bad situation uh, and hope that uh, the world at large will realize that we can't continue the way we are.